So welcome everybody to um, two talks in, in this session that are both devoted to the teaching of Italian. And our first speakers are both from the University of Pittsburgh, uh, Lorraine Denman and Chiara Montera. Uh, and the title of their talk is A New Complete OER for First Year Italian. So go ahead, thank Lorraine, you. Chiara. Thank you so much. And thank you for having us here. We're delighted to be able to present and also learn from our colleagues. Uh, so, you know, the reason for which we created this OER, the reasons for which I think are um, now uh, common to us all, to everyone here today. Uh, number one, first and foremost, it was a question of uh, accessibility, uh, of, uh, of providing uh, equal access um, for really what is a kind of niche textbook industry. So we find that most textbooks in Italian, especially for first year courses, are, are quite expensive. Um, we also wanted to get a kind away from a kind of monolithic, um, monocultural representation of Italian. And we also wanted to look at aspects of diversity and inclusion across the board, whether they be linguistic, whether they be addressing students' own particular identities and intersection, intersectionalities and so on. Um, we also have found, so University of Pittsburgh is a R1 institution. Um, you know, it traditionally was a regional school, but our demographics have changed quite a bit. We're now um, a, a kind of larger East Coast school. And so we found that a lot of our students um, were coming in with more linguistic experience. That is, so they're not taking a language class for the first time. Uh, and that most of our students were already taking or had already taken uh, another romance language such as Spanish or French, either in high school or at the University of Pittsburgh. So we wanted to uh, tailor our curriculum to that very specific kind of group. So people who have studied romance languages before. And so um, I'll tell you about that in just a second. And then we also wanted to find something that uh, we could use that would be online and um, something that would be compatible with our LMS, which is Canvas. And then we also wanted maximum flexibility. So we wanted to be able to change or switch out topics um, as, as you know, we, the course evolves and the curriculum evolves as new topics in, um, in popular culture or in politics or society come up. So we wanted to be able to, uh, you know, kind of be as flexible as possible with what we were presenting to students. And so the question of why Canvas Commons happens to be um, uh, a happy uh, coincidence, really. I had created a, a PDF version of a kind of gr grammar manual that we were sharing just with students. It was never published as an OER. Um, and uh, that PDF was used in conjunction with initially Schoology and then Blackboard, which was our, our LMS at the time. However, Canvas came to pit, so we, we left Blackboard and adopted Canvas as our LMS uh, the, over the last ac academic year. And so um, in that moment of transition, my colleague Chiara Montero and I decided to um, move that course that had been um, on Blackboard, uh, housed on Blackboard to Canvas, um, and then also to Cam Canvas Commons. And so we completed the Canvas Commons version over last summer um, and for a multitude of reasons. Well, you know, for, for one, we had the support of the University of Pittsburgh. We, they have a small grant program for faculty developing OERs. Um, we also were um, getting a lot of training on Canvas as, as Pitt made this transition. So it just kind of, you know, was the right moment. We also saw that Canvas did a lot that you know um, so, some things that Blackboard really couldn't do for us, and so um, we we seized that opportunity and posted materials. Now the downfall to, of course, um, creating an OER in this COVID year was that we had limited access to campus and campus resources, and so this version that we present here, um, there are no videos, for example, um, and eventually we would like to include things like that. But essentially, um, you know, Canvas Commons allowed us to create something that was multimedia, that has audio files, that has um, 
practice exercises that my colleague will show us in just a second. Um, it's, you know, easy to use, it's endlessly adaptable. And so those were very, very kind of um, uh, appealing components. And anyone can use Canvas Commons, of course. If you're an educator, you can create a free educator account and import the entire course um, and all of the exercises and materials and assessments as well. Um, before handing uh, over to Chiara, I just wanted to mention very briefly, so the first course is structured weekly, and so every week there's a different topic or theme, and the first half of the class uh, is really kind of that here and now language, right, so they're describing the college experience, they're describing their own surroundings, their living spaces, and, and so on. The second, of second half of the class focuses more on Italian experiences, and it moves into uh, more areas in which we can expo explore content-based instructional methodology. The second semester is composed of two-week modules in which students learn about a particular topic, such as made in Italy or um, Italian travel uh, and, and so on. And then um, within those modules, they're learning and reviewing grammatical um, structures from the, uh, the previous course and the previous lessons and then building their their linguistic skills and, and competencies. So um, now I'm going to hand it off to Chiara who will demonstrate um, and, and give us a little tour of uh, the OER itself. Thank you, Lorraine. Let me quickly share my screen. Here, that's great. You can see my screen, right? Perfect. So as Lorraine was saying, uh, I'm going to show you a little bit how we designed, um, especially Italian 1, Italian 2 is quite similar. So um, from our homepage, um, this is really the landing page for everything the students are going to need um, to access um, for the, our classes. So the first part is mostly our syllabus with all you need to know within a syllabus, you know, uh, expectation, grading system, and so on. Some resources in terms of dictionary and some resources in terms of fun things to do. We tend to update this, you know, this, these are like list of movies on Netflix uh, and so on. Uh, and then on the second part of the page, there is the actual course material and it's divided by weeks. And as you can see, every week has a title that uh, refers to the topic. Okay, so for example, um, I'm going to show you week four, Andiamo a Casa. So this is a typical uh, week page. So the topic here is the house. Uh, we included here both the grammar and cultural material. So we're going to talk about the differences in Italian uh, houses, uh, American houses. Um, at the top, we have always uh, the objectives of the week. And then we start always with vocabulary, with plenty of images to make it definitely more student friendly. Uh, then the vocabulary is also listed. And here you can hear my amazing voice um, saying out loud all the vocabulary. L'appartamento, il bagno, la camera da letto. We wanted to include all of these because we wanted the students to be able how to pronounce correctly all these words before coming to class. Um, after the vocabulary, there is always at least one activity uh, just to immediately re-employ the vocabulary and review the vocabulary just learn. This activity is called pratica and um, we decided to divide the different activities we created inside our, uh, our course uh, in different types of activities. So we have pratica, Pratica uh, are activities that wants, to, wants the student to review immediately one single topic. So after every topic, we have at least one pratica, uh, but usually even more. Then we have, as you can see, so here, for example, uh, we have adjectives. And after those, we have several pratica. After that, we're going to have something called controllo. Controllo is going to include all the material the students already saw in the pratica. 
so it's going to be a little more uh, comprehensive. Um, we have, all, of course, charts. Uh, and we usually close with a parliamo. Parliamo is a speaking assessment. So uh, at the end of every week, there is one parliamo. There is a very short speaking assessment on the topic of the week. Um, we also included quizzes. Uh, these are quizzes that the students should take at home. And unlike Pratica and Controllo, they are um, only one attempt uh, in a limited time uh, and so on. So the kind of quizzes that when we are physically in class, uh, the students would take, you know, with pen and paper in like 10 minutes at the beginning of, uh, of class, for example. Um, we also have um, some longer activities. Uh, they're called progetti. Um, and those progetti are just for this class, just four. Um, oh, three even. Uh, so for example, the first is just presentations. This is gonna be two weeks in the class. So the students uh, would have acquired enough to present themselves to another person and to briefly talk about what they study and uh, uh, what they do in their daily life, for example. And usually we try to include in Pratica, Controllo and Progetti all the different skills. So um, uh, usually there is some listening activity. They have to respond to a listening activity. They have to uh, read something and then write something. Most part of Pratica are machine graded. Um, and also Controllo are usually machine graded. Uh, progetti, on the other hand, are usually, uh, um, you know, something they have to write. Sometimes is a small presentation, sometimes is, a, it is an oral presentation, sometimes is the typical essay, you know, the one page essay that they have to write. So it's going to be graded by the, uh, the instructor. Um, I think I explained more or less the gist about Italian 1. Italian 2, similarly, is organized by weeks, as Lorraine was saying, is organized bi-weekly. So we usually uh, work the first week on vocabulary. So for example, if you take shopping, uh, the first of the two weeks is going to be on vocabulary, in which we review grammar they already studied in the past that makes sense with uh, um, with the vocabulary. And in the second week, we're gonna, um, here starts the second week of this module, uh, we're gonna include grammar, new grammar. So with the new grammar, we're gonna include the vocabulary from the previous week, you know, in a scaffolding kind of style. So the students don't feel they are, you know, showered with too much new material at the same time. Yeah, I also just wanted to mention, if I could jump in here, Chiara, mm -hmm. yeah. that yeah. We, we focused more on practices from second language acquisition and applied linguistics. And so this whole first year is really, there's a lot of, you know, discrete grammatical elements, uh, but we really kind of slowed down um, how much uh, a grammar that you might typically see in an Italian textbook. So in this first semester, we don't go beyond present tense verbs. In the second semester, we're focusing mostly on review of uh, basic grammatical structures and uh, present tense, and then including also um, that past tense verbs, passato prossimo and imperfetto. So we really kind of, um, like I said, we kind of tailor it to how we think our students um, learn and uh, in, in, in the best way possible. Yeah, exactly. And uh, also uh, another difference we have with um, Italian too is that we included also another kind of activity called scriviamo. And it's just, uh, um, uh, you know, a very short uh, writing assignment just to re-employ uh, the grammar and the vocabulary they learn during the two weeks. So it's gonna be not a project or kind of long, uh, uh, assignment, but a, a very little thing that students can do uh, very easily. Yeah, we only have about one more minute. I just wanted to say that we, we've uh, collected some student feedback and it's been overwhelmingly positive. 
um, Canvas, you know, like any kind of LMS or, you know, any kind of system is not 100% uh, perfect or ideal, but for our purposes, it seems to be working well. Um, and uh, yeah, so I don't know if there are any questions. Oh, yes, um, I have the links. Yeah, I, I put the links in there too. So they should be up earlier in the chat as well. Yeah, okay, I'll send you a link. Um, why did you present it each, uh, let's see. Uh, just so, so we were thinking about um, the kind of structures that we were learning or teaching in class. And so we have in, for example, in Italian two, we're using a kind of scaffolded, scaffolded system where we're reviewing uh, previously studied grammar uh, in, um, in, with new vocabulary, right? Um, and, and reviewed vocabulary as well. And then we have a second week where we're looking at more advanced structure. So it's kind of like almost the idea of a, a Bloom's taxonomy. We're going from you know, previously studied material. It's all very highly scaffolded. Okay, thank you very much. That was fascinating. And um, again, on a Canvas course, another example of Canvas being used to house an OER. Uh, 